Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you're doing well and all those kind of things. I'm playing around with a photo in Pixelmator Pro today. Uh, a couple of weeks ago or so, I did a first impressions video, which I will link to up there in that corner. Uh, the first impressions video was about Pixelmator Pro, of course. And of course, um, in short, my first impression was kind of like, wow, it's cool. It's interesting. It's, it's not expensive at all. It's incredibly powerful app. It's super cheap. I think it's $40 in the App Store. It is Mac only, just to be clear. But I've been playing around with it. I got a photo. I just started playing around. And so this video, I'm going to do a little bit of a workflow. I'm going to use a preset. I'm going to adjust some tools. I'm going to apply some effects. I'm also going to do a, not a deep dive, but a, you know, up to the knee deep kind of dive on a particular tool because there's some really cool stuff in here. There's a lot to unpack. If you're interested in more videos about Pixelmator Pro, let me know down below. Um, I like it. I would like to keep using it. Well, I will keep using it. But if you're interested, I will make more videos about it. So let's hop into it. Here's a photo. And it was a lovely sunset. This is the Panama Canal. And uh, this was many years ago. This is just a JPEG copy. Uh, but anyway, too dark. The color's kind of lost. Blah, blah, blah. First thing I want to do, though, is crop it. So I'm going to go into the crop. And I'm going to get a custom size, which is a 16 by 9 which if you've been here before, you kind of know, oops, I'm going the wrong way. You kind of know how much I like the 16 by nine crop. I'm gonna do something about like that and I'm gonna hit apply, stick that on there. My photo is ready to go. And the next thing I'm gonna do is click on this preset. I'm in the landscape category. There's quite a few to choose from. I'm gonna choose this number three. And you will see as soon as I do that, number one, the color is just intensified a lot, which I like. It's my thing. I just love color. I can't help it. And the other thing is, as you can see, just like with any preset, the tools that are used in the preset are now visible to you. You can see they're the ones that have opened up and are turned on. So there's quite a few, and again, not a full review. There's literally too much uh, in Pixelmator Pro to talk about in a single video, but I do want to dive into one particular tool because this is a tool you don't have. I don't think it's in Lightroom. I'm kind of getting away from Lightroom, which is how I ended up trying out Pixelmator Pro. And let me pause for one second. This to me is not really a replacement for Lightroom. It's a hell of an editor. It's super powerful. It's amazing. Um, I think you can edit in here at least as good and probably better than you can in Lightroom, but there's no library component. So it's not really a replacement for it. It's to me more of a replacement for kind of Photoshop and Lightroom, except for the library or catalog component. Anyway, I'm not getting into all that. I'm going to use it. I love the tool, but it's not going to be what I replace Lightroom with. I've figured that out. It's more of a replacement for Photoshop for me, to be honest. Anyway, so here we go. We're in the tool. I've applied a preset. I cropped it. Usually when my photo is this dark, I would come in here and say, hey, you know what I need to do? I need to like lift the shadows a little bit. And that's kind of helping some. And I don't want the highlights to get too bright. So I might would babysit those a little bit. But even lifting the shadows, I mean, I got to go a pretty long way, but then everything starts to get really bright. So I'm going to kind of leave it where it is. And this is where I want to talk about this particular tool. And it's not curves, it's levels. This levels, I'm pretty sure is not in Lightroom. It's not in Luminar. Um, I don't think it's in any of the Topaz stuff. It is in Photoshop. I don't really use Photoshop, to be honest. I kind of hate it. So that's why I'm uh, so happy about this. So levels gives you amazing control over colors and tones and things like that. So You've got different choices here. This is not a deep dive on levels. Like I said, it's kind of a knee deep dive, but what I want to do, I'm going to stick with RGB. So uh, you've got these five different sliders down here that you can move. You can move these three in the middle, left or right, whereas the one on the far left only goes to the right, and the one on the far right only goes to the left because it's constrained by the outer bounds of the tool. And if you can't tell, just like on uh, the curves tool, starting with the left, that's shadows. This is kind of middle shadows. That's the midtones. that's middle, you know, highlights, if you will, and that's highlights. So you can take uh, shadows that way, but that's going to darken them. So I usually start over here on a darker photo. If I go to the right, it's getting darker. So I'm going to go to the left, and you can see what this is doing. I mean, my photo is brightening up really nicely. I love having this kind of control. This is not something that you have in a lot of other tools. Um, there's not a specific thing I would do on any particular photo. I would just come in and experiment. I like this one here, this kind of middle highlights, because if I go to the right, I'm kind of losing some of that highlights, and I like that pop of brightness up there. So I'm going to go back left, and that gets a little bit brighter, but it's not blowing out. It's not messing up the rest of the photo. I'm going to pull it back a little bit. And if I go to highlights, 
it is going to kind of start to get pretty bright. So I'm going to leave that alone. But these middle two tools are just really powerful. And I love that. So I'm going to go a little bit more to the left with this one. And let me show you what this particular tool levels did to this photo. Remember, it was pretty dark. I'm going to leave everything else on in the photo, which was um, it had curves in it. It has color. It has lots of things. But I'm going to turn off levels. That's how dark it was. That was crazy, crazy dark, but that's what it looked like, and now it looks like that. Now, keep in mind, this RGB is also impacting color, as I can tell. Uh, so I might want to go back into the red and maybe just do a little bit of red. You know, that would be that in those kind of middle tones or blue. I think I'm going to go to the highlights and put a little bit more red in there. You can see how the sky is starting to get a little bit more pink, which I like. And maybe I'm going to go to green and get a little bit of kind of magenta there. Which way is it? I'm kind of getting confused myself. There we go. I kind of like that. I think that's looking pretty nice. So that's one of the cool things about this tool. And again, not a deep dive. I, I'm, I'm not a master of the levels tool or frankly anything in Pixelmator. I want to be clear about that. I like where I am. I think there's still more I'd like to do. I love their color balance tool. So I'm going to come over here and highlights. So I'm going to go a little bit more towards the pink and go a little bit more saturated and maybe a little bit brighter as well. This is a great tool. Lots of control. I think I'm also going to brighten up the midtones a little bit. See how that's impacting the photo. And I think I'm going to brighten up the shadows a tad as well. And maybe pull down the saturation. It's going to take a little bit of that blue out. I'm going to take a little bit of the blue out of those midtones as well. Just kind of reducing saturation overall. The photo is a little bit flatter. Remember, here's where I started. Let me show you. Look at that. I mean, very dark, uh, not colorful at all. Here, a lot more cuddle, but so, uh, a lot more color, but subtle. I'm not trying to go crazy over the top, but I do like what I'm getting. And I have a lot of control over it with these various tools like color balance and, of course, levels and selective color, which is basically go in and pick any individual color and affect HSL. So this is, in other words, an HSL tool. Now, I'm going to go over here to hue and saturation. I'm going to give it a little bit of saturation and vibrance bump, something like that. And then I want to go up to white balance. And I'm going to give it a little bit of warmth, actually, a little bit of warmth, something like that. I'm kind of liking this look. It's a little desaturated, but I'm about to have a little bit of fun. And one of the other things I really like, I think the presets, are they're actually working for me pretty well. I kind of like them. I love all these tools, especially levels and color balance, as I've talked about. And you've got other things down here that I'm not getting into in this video. But on this other tab over here, you have effects. So I'm going to go click on effects. Actually, you know what? I'm not. I'm going to do one other thing. Let me show you this. There is a repair tool. So I see a couple of spots. I'm going to click that, and I'm going to go repair a couple of these spots and just get rid of them. And I think it does a fine job of getting rid of those spots for me. And there's one down here in the water that's kind of driving me nuts. And I think there's one over here. Yeah, there's one there. So I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to go to the effects. And all you do is you just go click on the next tab, and you move on. So in that first impression video, again, it's up there, um, I did a little bit where I talked about the effects. You have basically all these different kinds of effects that you can do, or you can just click Add Effect, and you can go through them. There's the Blur category, then you get into Distortion, Sharpen, and by the way, all these categories that I'm scrolling through uh, that you see the different individual um, edit editors or tools for on the right, they correspond to the different categories here. So there's a lot you can do. I'm not going to do anything with that. I'm actually going to go get a preset, and I'm trying to remember the one that I liked. Yeah, it was this one. So a lot going on here. This is where you get into the kind of artistic realm, but I like it. If you don't like color and artistic stuff, then you may not be interested in these effects, and that's totally fine. But I think it's cool. Like if you click on this one, you got all these bokeh effects, but you can see there's a lot of grain, which I don't like. So you can just come up here and delete that grain, and now you got just the bokeh effects. And you can, of course, change the bokeh if you want to. In fact, it's got it in there twice. You might just come in here and, you know, make different choices, flip it around or whatever. But instead of that, I think I'm going to go with this one. And it's got all these different tools that are added automatically. So the cool thing is you've got this color uh, option, right, which is one of those effects you can go add individually. So all these presets are or just a combination of some of the different effects all grouped together. I like light leaks. Personally, I've had a lot of fun with those. I don't need sharpen on this one. I'm not trying to create a crispy photo. And the thing I want to do is maybe pull down the opacity on some of these so it's not as uh, warm or as over the top. So I'm going to pull down uh, some of the effect here on the light leak. There's also color overlay. There's two. They basically got pink and a kind of a yellow. And these are basically color overlays. So they're just slapped on top. So if I go like that, 
you're gonna get a whole lot of it, but I'm gonna pull that down, and all I'm doing is creating this kind of fun, soft, kind of dreamy sunset look, and using the preset as a starting point with a little bit of customization. And let me show you one, one more time. There's the before. Now this is the before for the effects tab. That's the photo that I had before, and here it is with the effects added. And honestly, the amount of stuff that you can do in Pixelmator Pro, it's kind of mind blowing. As I said, I could never cover it all in a single video. I was just kind of having fun and creating something that I kind of like. You may not like some of these effects, like I said. I like light leaks and I like things like that because it's fun to add these creative things to photos. Sometimes it spices them up a little bit. But regardless, you've got lots of power, you've got lots of control, and frankly, you can just have a lot of fun with Pixelmator Pro. So that's why I like it. I'm having a lot of fun. If you're interested in more videos about it, please leave a comment down below. And if there's specific things about it you'd like me to experiment with or you know learn enough about to make a video about, let me know because I'm continuing to explore this photo editor. It's powerful, it's fun, it can do a lot. And I think, like I said, I think it's like $40 or something in the uh, Mac App Store. So it's not expensive at all compared to a lot of apps and considering the amount of stuff that you get in this app, it's kind of a no-brainer if you have the budget to do it. I think it's well worth it. I'll put a link down below. Not an affiliate link, I'm, I don't make any money on that and I don't care, I'm not trying to. I just think the tool is really cool and I'm trying to share the uh, the love, if you will, because as a creative type oriented photographer, I like these kind of things and I just think some of you guys might like it as well. So one more time, there's my before and after. And if you decide you don't like these effects, just delete all these and just be done with it and then just go back to your regular photo. And in fact, you can do that easily just by hitting reset. There you go, reset. I'm clear of my effects and I'm back to my regular photo and I can go back to this regular first tab and do further editing if I'd like to. So that's a workflow, some ideas, some experiments. Honestly, just a little bit of fun in Pixelmator Pro. Hope you like it. Thanks for watching, my friends. Hope you stay warm out there. Stay uh, healthy and safe, all those kind of things, but mostly have fun editing. Regardless of the tools you use, just have fun. It should be fun. I'm having fun. I hope you're having fun. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video, my friends. Take care of yourselves and adios.